hey guys good morning welcome to my channel i hope you guys are doing well today i hope you guys are blessed i hope you guys are feeling the peace of god the joy of god and guys we also have to remember it's not about how we feel right we still have to push and give god a praise and thank him for being alive and just for his goodness and his mercies glory to god because God is good. He is good all the time. He is good. Even when we don't understand, he is good. So, guys, I want to talk with you about a few things that the Lord has just been laying in my heart. And he's really placed a burden on my heart to really talk about the nitty gritty and the real deal on certain things that's going on or people have experienced and some of that is going to be sharing my experiences and you know the other day I was um, I read a comment and a person was saying you know there's no need to over spiritualize things and you know we just got to pray and keep it moving and you know perhaps that person is just saying and just speaking as they know things but I think what happens a lot within the body of Christ is that if you can hear that noise I'm sorry that's my door there's probably something in the door making that crazy noise oh I know what it is I don't know what it is oh I see hold on let me adjust this okay all fixed <laughs> so any anyway guys um the problem that i find in many churches and i want to say religious organizations is that they're very content giving blanket blanket statements but they're not really getting into the weeds on things that's going on in people's lives like very rarely you're going to hear about them talking about child abuse. You're not going to hear them talking about sexual abuse, spousal abuse. They're not going to talk like that. They will tell you that God will bring you through. They will say that trust and believe in the Lord, which we have to. Yes. But you know what? Jesus touched people individually while he was preaching the gospel and he was preaching on repentance he dealt with people individually he was not to he he saw Zacchaeus he was sensitive to the fact that Zacchaeus was a short man that couldn't see him and he went up in a tree he says Zacchaeus he looked up and says Zacchaeus come on down and he sat and he ate with Zacchaeus he had dinner with Zacchaeus if I'm not mistaken God realized the woman with the issue of blood, she was trying to reach him and she touched him. And he said, who touched me? Because there was something different. And everybody was saying to him, Lord, there are all these people pressing on you and you're wondering who touched you, but there was something different. So you see, God is sensitive to the needs and he gets in the weeds and he will pinpoint and he will, he wants us to talk about those things, guys, that people are not talking about. They're not talking about sexual harassment in the church. God is going to talk about that because there's somebody who's drowning in all the scripture and all the word and all the blanket statements and all the, you know, the, the statements where people want to be neutral and they have no one to really talk to them about the real deal. And so, you know, guys, I want you to realize that it's very important that you are in the word of God, but asking the Lord to also open up your understanding so you can un understand scripture. It is also important to understand the, uh, the importance of obedience. You know, you're not going to do everything perfect in the beginning, and sometimes you make mistakes, but it's important that you obey God because when you obey the Lord when you obey the voice of the Holy Spirit when he tells you don't do this don't do that turn that off it really makes it where the more you obey the Lord the more you begin to discern and understand and be able to pick up on the things that God wants to show you the deep things of God the mysteries of God you'll be able to discern you'll be able to perceive the heart and the thoughts of man 
It's not that you're walking around as a mind reader and everybody's mind and their thoughts are just open to us, but in situation where it is it is important, God is going to reveal things to you. And one of the things that can be very hard for people to realize and to grasp is the wickedness in church, the wickedness among the saints. Yes, there's wickedness in the world, but that's what they supposed to do. That's what they do. They're going to do whatever the works of the flesh says that they're going to do. And you'll find the, the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. But wickedness in the church is something that's really different. It's covert and it is, when you see it, you don't want to believe it. But there are people who say that they're Christians that are demonically charged. They are full of demons. They have a religious spirit, which, mean, which means they know the word. They are religious, which means they enjoy going into the house of God. They like to clap. They like to sing. They like to participate. They like to be to hear prophecy. They like to hear the preaching. They like a good word. But they are going to go right back home and do what they normally do. Live in worldly or continue in that area of sin that they know is sin, but they're just going to do it because they fall back on, I go to church, I'm not so bad, I'm not as bad as this next person. But as I said, sin is sin. It doesn't matter if it's not as bad as the next person. God's not going to ask you about the next person. He's going to measure you against you. That's it. So the wickedness that happens, guys, I just remember, you know, just being in church, and the Lord would just show me so many things that I didn't understand. Where I saw people that were singing and preaching and falling out and crying and speaking in tongues. But they were so nasty in other environments. I mean, doing that thing that they do, passive aggressive. They, they're not going to speak to you. They preach against you. They do all these different things. They find out things about you. They use it against you. And I was exposed to these things and I saw these things. And guys, through the military, I had the opportunity to travel all over the world. And no matter where I went, I would find and encounter this behavior in the body of Christ. The love bombing followed by the conditional behaviors followed by uh, denials, okay, denial. Uh, doing things and acting like they're not doing it when you try to speak about it they're acting like they don't know what you're talking about yet their behavior uh, gets in you know gets progressively worse and guys that is the nature of a demon number one a demon will lie it is a form of torment to say nothing is wrong while they continue to treat you differently to treat you differently and deny it and make you feel like it's all you. In addition, they get other people to start misbehaving. And yet and still they're saying, no, we don't know what you're talking about. So you cannot get resolution. You cannot get to the bottom of it. They're not going to tell you the truth because Satan is the father of liars. He he lies. It's his nature. He does not know how to do anything else. So these people... They are simply behaving in a way that's natural to them. But what you as a child of God have to know is to have that discernment and to know what God shows you and to believe the Holy Spirit. You got to know when it's, you know, hey, wheels up, it's time to go. You have to know when you need to remove yourself. You need to be able to see what God is showing you in situations and believe the Holy Spirit. There's people that will misbehave and do just, you know, as I say, miscreants. That's what they are, spiritual miscreants. And they do these things and they'll deny it because they're liars. They'll say they're not mad at you, but they are mad at you because they, they immediately change in their behavior. So now they want you to believe that their sudden change of behavior is nothing. In addition, a lot of you, if you ask them, hey, is everything okay? Oh, everything is fine. In the meantime, they will continue to be doing spiritual things. That means they have no conscience. They have no sort of um, 
conviction in what they're doing because that is a nature of the devil. And people really don't like to hear devil and demons, but they love to mess with their stuff. They like to go in their, you know, they like to go in their arena. But don't call me a devil. Don't call me a demon. But that's what it is. People that behave this way are normally possessed by a demonic spirit, an evil spirit. It's a, a passive aggressive spirit, a lying spirit, a tormenting spirit. And what's important, guys, is not what they tell you, but that you watch their fruit. The Lord told you that. By their fruit, you shall know them. In Matthew 7, by their fruit, you shall know them. Some of them, guys, it may not even be your leaders. It could just be people that you have known, their behavior over the years. You'd be surprised that somebody is doing the same thing, the same behavior they were doing when MC Hammer came out with Can't Touch This. When you were wearing leg warmers back in the 80s and headbands and, and all of that, they're doing the same things back then. They're doing the same thing in when the millennium came in. They're, they're, they're doing the same thing in two, that they were doing in 2001. They're doing that in 2009. And you're going through the same cycles over and over again with these individuals. That lets you know at the core of them, this is their nature. You know, guys, we can make mistakes. No one is perfect, but people who are consistently inconsistent, consistently back and forth, consistently uh, uh, sexual deviants, they're consistently liars, they're consistent lies, they're consistent gossips, they are consistent in being hot and cold. They like you today, then they don't like you the next day consistently keeping the tea and keeping things going that's when you know that there is a spirit or spirits that resides and inhabits in them and then they are just not going to stop doing what they're doing there's nothing that is too hard for god that means they're not willing to let go they're not willing to allow the Lord to do his perfect will. They're not willing to allow the Lord to make those changes in them. So what's important for you and for me? It's not that you sit there trying to figure out what they're doing and why. It's going to God in prayer. Going to the Lord in prayer. It's important that your heart is pure before God. That means if you have areas where you need to forgive, you need to let go, you need to pray and ask God to help you with that. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to hear from God. You're going to hear from your flesh. Your flesh is going to tell you God said, God said, but God didn't say. Because your heart is still full of malice and hatred and, and resentment. So you cannot hear from God. Because number one, if you haven't forgiven a person, God has not forgiven you for your sins. So you're not hearing nothing from him if he has not forgiven you for your sins. And forgiveness, especially in things that people have done evil and horrible things, it is a process, but you must be willing to allow the Lord to take you through that process. But the Lord will show you their heart. The Lord will show you their fruit. The Lord will show you their nastiness. The Lord will show you their hypocrisy. He will show you those things for your own safety, for your peace of mind, no matter what they tell you. Because a lot of times these type of people are walking around. They're just a walking talking um uh, what's the word i'm trying to say uh just a walking talking contradiction they say one thing and they do another bitter and sweet will come out of their mouth they're light and then sometimes they're dark you know what people do consistently most of the time is their fruit because you and I can make mistakes and say something we shouldn't say. But when you have the Holy Spirit, he will convict you. He's going to show you this was not right. And when you're walking in the spirit of God, you're going to be convicted. <clears throat> excuse me. And you're going to want to make it right. And you're not going to keep doing the same things over and over again. But people who are consistently sinful, they do that because they don't belong to God. You know, the wheat and the tares, there's a parable that Jesus talks about that 
their tares that are planted among the wheat. And some people, they're very comfortable being tares, but they pretend to be the wheat, but they cannot pretend it's going to slip out. And they're just going to go back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes people apologize because they want to cover up something. Sometimes people apologize and they say they're sorry for things because their sponsorship, their money depends on the image that they must maintain. And a lot of times those sponsors, they don't care. As long as you can keep your private life under wraps, we don't care. Just keep producing. But the minute you bring that out, we got to cut which we got to cut all that off because we have to maintain our money. Sometimes sponsors, they don't care about character. They don't care about spirituality and people walking with God. They only care about their money and that they keep getting the viewers, the likes, the sponsors. And, you know, that's it. So by their fruit, you're going to know them when God reveals things to you. Believe him. Believe God and not the deceiving spirit. How can you believe somebody that's hot and cold? First they're left, then they're right, then they're then they're lukewarm, and then they're doing something else, and then they're denying this and doing and doing and doing, and then they're constantly doing little things. That's who they are at their core. And God reveals these things to you so you know who you're dealing with. He's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do, what you hide, when you need to remove yourself, when you need to refrain. Because sometimes there's certain conversations and certain things you should not be having, certain things you should not reveal certain places you should not go and the Lord will show you and a lot of the things that I realized the Lord showed me was because of the area in which he was going to use me today to minister to people people need to know yes they're evil pastors yes they're first ladies who are jealous and evil yes there are people in the church who live a double life yes god sees and knows that your husband or wife is abusive they know that your parents are abusive he knows that you have hypocritical parents parents who are hypocrites they go to church and do one thing and come home and do something else yes the church mothers could be doing something else going to church and being one way and then going in and 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 causing problems and, and gossip in their families. Yes, this stuff is real and God is uncovering it. And no, you're not crazy. Yes, God will reveal to you the heart of that parent, the mother, that father, that they're evil and they do wrong and they live sinful lives. There will be that one child or that few that God will raise up and they're going to see you as you are. And a lot of times a parent is going to have something against that child because the evil spirit that is in that parent recognizes something different, the light of God in that child. So they won't like them. But I'm here to tell you that God trumps a parent anytime. Especially a parent that's evil and devious, a parent that's disobedient and willful, uh, uh, willfully sinning, trying to sin with class and decorum. Trying to sin morally. How is that possible? So when God opened your eyes, it's a lot of times because he's chosen you. He's chosen you to see what's there. And so you can be a light. And he's letting you know, no, you're not crazy. No, you are not losing it. You're seeing what you're seeing. The truth of the matter is it's time to look up. Look to God. You cannot go wrong studying the word of God. You cannot go wrong talking to God. You cannot go wrong bringing all your issues to him. And you will not go wrong when God says, leave this alone, leave these people alone, it's very, very common. And it's, it's, it's more likely that after a while, God will pull you away from people who are evil because people who do evil, they are dealing with evil demonic spirits. And if you stay around them, you're going to get the fallout. If you stay around them, you're going to experience the fallout. A lot of times people are losing their mind, they're tormented, they're cursing, they're fighting, they're irritated, they're unhappy, they're heavy in their heart, they're depressed because they keep staying around people that's evil. And sometimes there's people, oh, I don't have a way out. If you think back, some of you, God gave you a way out, but you stayed. God gave you a way out, 
but you went back to them. God gave you a way out, but you begged them to come back to you. And then some of you guys, you're still waiting, but God is going to make a way. You continue to pray. You continue to seek him. The Lord wants us to be in a place where we trust him more than we trust man. And when he uncovers and lifts their skirts, as it's talked about, I believe in Isaiah, when he lifts their skirts, it simply means he will show you what's hidden. When he opens your eyes and he shows you them, believe the Lord. When he shows you that, that evil look, when he shows you their consistent patterns of of violations of the word and of your your heart and of your trust he's shown you that spirit you need to trust him and know that there is purpose in revelation be a light to others continue to speak the word god don't want us to just give blanket statements of oh god loves you yes he does love you but there are people who are hurting the lord cared enough to to heal peter's mother from a fever he was one man this is some small stuff just drink some water and, and, and lay down he healed her he cares he gets in the weeds he sees and he knows what's going on and so I'm here to just encourage you that you are not crazy that you're not deranged you are not losing it you're not evil just because a pack of evil folks get together and call you evil don't mean you're evil just because a pack of folks get together and tell you being too holy and too spiritual the minute they tell you you're too holy you're getting too deep you're talking to a demon a demon is speaking to you how can you be too holy how can you be too righteous how can you be reading your bible too much how could you be talking about god too much when they'll sit and binge watch a bunch of worldly stuff they'll sit and binge watch a bunch of on ungodly things and listen to gossip and and they can binge on immorality and sexual sins at high levels but you're reading your bible too much by their fruit you shall know them the fruit is also what comes out of their mouth so i want you to be encouraged i want you to grab hold of god i want you to trust him i want you to seek him i want you to know that no matter what is going on around you that you are actually in a safe space with the lord and he's going to lead you he's going to guide you he's going to deliver you he's going to protect you and so don't feel that you're alone because you're not there are many people who are going through and experiencing a lot of the things that you are going through and experiencing. You are part of the remnant. You're part of the few. And because God is calling, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. Many hear about God. But many people choose their own will. Many people choose to worship and follow after their pastor and their leaders. And, and they follow after the person who who they are following after a person who is operating in their gifts without the Holy Spirit anymore. So their gifts continue to operate and they're drawn by that. But a lot of times it's because they're carnal. It's a lot of times it's because they there are things within them that's still not healed. So they feel like I need to I need to follow after this person. I need to bless this person. I need to almost worship this person. But guys, everything is in God. Your life, your strength, your hope, your deliverance, everything is in God. If you turn to him with your whole heart, seek him out. I'm trying to tell you, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal everything to you. And remember, revelation, when God reveals things to you, sometimes it's, just, it's going to bring rejection. You're going to feel like you're alone. But no, even if you feel like you're alone and they leave you, you are not alone. Jesus said the same thing. You guys will leave me alone, but I'm not alone because my father is with me. God is with you. So there's no way you and I can ever be alone. All right, guys. Peace.